Good morning, LockPod people. It is season 11, episode 14, and we don't have a locomotive, but we do have... 17 chi- guests. <laughs> <laughs> we, we have, so crowded in we have a good guest, and I'm going to tag in for even better guest when Dr. Forrick comes in. That would be John Cantrell, former sponsor of the show, and, <laughs> and uh, I'm on criminal, de- criminal defense attorney yeah. extraordinaire, but actually that's one of the reasons we're flipping the show around today. Well, of course, John, as you know, is at the jail and in court every day. But um, also, we've got a criminal defense attorney that's going to come on in just a second after we do ads. And his name is McCracken Poston Jr. And he's written a book called Zenith Man about his murder trial. And I wanted John to be here to make sure to uh, question him. So, John, welcome, as always, to the show. Thank you. I'm excited. I, uh, I, I did a little deep dive on this fella, and I'm, I'm impressed, to be honest Okay, with cool. You. Well, that's good. If, that's, if, if you're impressed, that means a lot. Um, also, and I should have said this, but we are the Midwest's most dangerous podcast, and we are coming from Nika IBEW, powering Indiana Lake County Studios. That's a mouthful, Phil. It's it, a lot. It, you know what I? You know what I did uh, this morning? Like I came in, and you guys are still moving the whole office around, and there's yeah. some things there's that some things. there's some boxes over there in the corner. They're going to go up on shelves and things, mm-hmm. but. I thought you got the Tom bobblehead and it feels empty, so I bought in. Uh, you brought the Snoop bobblehead Ru- in? Ruth Bader Ginsburg and uh, Snoop Dogg. Thank you. To give the boxing uh, locomotive, our mayor, Mayor Tom, some company. Yeah, he, he looked truthfully lonely. All right, so there you go. Yeah. He's and, got, we got Snoop and we've got uh, so RBG. We you talk- notice she's not smiling in the middle of the She's two. not they, happy. They look happy. They, but she's not. She's not so well, much. I mean, do you think that she's happy with the state of the world right now? No. So, like, her face would probably change under different circumstances. There you go. Phil, every time I tried to lead you in, um, I wasn't able to, so welcome. Uh, I mean, you came in <laughs> insulting. Uh, I did? You're not a sponsor anymore. I'm not a locomotive. I mean, that's all I heard. I apologize. You know? But you but, know what? You know what? I fi- picture you, and this is growing up in East Chicago, they had trains, and so... You would count the engines on the beginning of the train because mm-hmm. that could tell you how, how many long cars they're be. pulling. So I still do that. You're that's you. Me too. My my me and my grandma figured it out, and I used to get stuck <laughs> by trains all the time, especially driving a BNI. But Phillips, that second lo- locomotive oh. behind the first one, right so, behind it. Yeah, not quite the coal car, not the lead. Yeah, but you're the. But secondary not, and not the caboose not but, the, but no not the caboose. you don't want to be that can we say me. This? trust me <laughs> can we say this you know the locomotive often paves the way for locomotives and then um you know like it, it just gets you ready to be a locomotive so this is, oh really yeah this is an, phil, like you think phil's system. gonna be the locomotive i don't think phil's ever gonna be the locomotive here i, I mm. think he has locomotive material quality he's yeah, got he locomotive does. qualities yeah how about these we bars? Have <laughs> yeah. He, uh, <laughs> Look at so this. Before he's, I forget. He's much older than me. I have to uh, say oh, that. Oh, wow. One year. And you're year. on that side of the table. Yeah. Jay Vez, how are you feeling this morning? I've been better. Uh, yes. I want to give kudos to our producer, uh, Jay Vez, who is, of course, a little bit under the weather still. You heard it Tuesday. <laughs> it's progressed, but he's here. He looks like shit, to be honest with you. <laughs> like, there's no Vez mark him, but he looks like hell, and he's probably happy to this day. I'm yeah. proud of him. Yeah. He showed he's up. His, yeah. yeah. With his we, hoodie on. What would we do if he wasn't here? Who's going to run that? It doesn't happen. I mean, exactly. You want to talk about a locomotive? It doesn't happen yeah. without John Vez. That's a good point. My nana has this, um, like, thing that she watches baseball <laughs> games in. Grandma and it's Nana like, in, in the first it's five like minutes. A, it's like Are a these little... different people? <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> Are they different nicknames? We has, don't know. She's the same, same person. Woman. <laughs> she has a bubble that she sits in to watch, like, a cold old softball and baseball games nana <laughs> my <laughs> nana also known as Kristen, my <laughs> wife yes we role play but i don't want to get into a lot of specifics here on the show today wanna, you're my nana yeah. do you want to tell us something about your? <laughs> well you were talking the other day about your mom rubbing noxema all over you and that, like that happened I, when i was a kid and see I, sunburn I, I laughed in my car because <laughs> i said out there? loud i'm like was this last week <laughs> do you have any stories about pop pop <laughs> That's another name. Yeah. And Jill, thank you uh, yeah, for bringing the, the million dollar bars homemade. Oh, uh, yeah. Can we just describe what's on these, Jill? What you what you made these with? Love. I'm going to pull it. Let's <laughs> start with out. love. Let's pull start one out. there. Go ahead, Jill. Mm-hmm. There's uh, shortbread, caramel, mm-hmm. and chocolate. All right. Holy. And how do you make homemade caramel? Homemade caramel. Wow. What does that mean by homemade caramel? Like you make your own, like literally make your own like caramel? Like you buy caramel yes. and you melt, no. it, melt it, and then no. you reform it, and it's ho- homemade. No. You get you get no. caramel fruit, and then you uh, <laughs> you pulp it. That's good. That was good, Jill. Thank you. Kevin, why are there handprints all over the wall? Mm. Don't ask. <laughs> uh, John was here with Nana or Pop Pop or whoever he was here with. <laughs> I have no idea. I'm going to choke on this caramel. <laughs> so are you guys excited right. to see Dr. Forright and like to be oh. filled mm-hmm. in on his travels and his adventures? Well, that's what's coming after 8 o'clock. When John has to go to court, oh, um, so we um, are bringing Dr. Forright in. 
We're going to get an update from Michael about all his travels around the world. But let's first do ads because I know I got our guest who's coming up. McCracken Poston Jr. who wrote this book, Zenith Man, about a murder trial in northwest Georgia that John's going to talk to him about. Uh, so, Phil, why don't you lead us off with some ads? And uh, we'll be right back with, with, the, uh, with our guest. Powering Indiana Lake County. IBEW Local 697 and NECA NECA proudly bring you Powering Indiana Lake County. With over a century of experience, they've been safely wiring the region. From powering corporations along the lakefront to lighting up homes across Lake County, Powering Indiana Lake County is your trusted source for electrical professionals. Join them as they continue to light the way for Northwest Indiana. Visit Powering Indiana Lake County at www.poweringindiana.org. <laughs> Misprint Printing. Elevate your brand with Misprint, the premier printing and sign solution in Chicago land in Northwest Indiana with a 30-year legacy of excellence. Their experienced team, by, led by Rick Baltensberger, combines innovation technology to deliver top quality signs and printing. And this is your metal business card uh, cue, Phil. Oh, God. Just, and. Just throw something. <laughs> oh, my God. Was that bad? Was that bad? bad? <laughs> yes. Oh, was it this John? one? John. <laughs> Go ahead. Thank you. Like it's hot, Philip. Come yes. On. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> that was not bad. That wasn't bad, Phil. Thank you. Signs and printing and metal business cards always on time within budget. Visit them at MissPrintUSA.com to bring your vision to life today. MissPrint, your partner for creating impactful visual solutions. Calumet Brewing. It's time to experience Michelob Ultra with only 95 calories, 2.6 carbs, 4.2% ABV. The perfect way to start 2024 and keep those resolutions in check. It doesn't matter if you're kicking back after a workout, hitting a pickup game at the park, or heading out to a day on the slopes. Be sure to enjoy a superior light beer that's only worth it if you enjoy it. Make a Lobe Ultra is brewed to be a complement to your healthy lifestyle. Head over to Cal Brew or the Michelob Ultra websites and social media pages for details on this great family of beers. Enjoy the Ultra lifestyle and with beers and cheers responsibly. Prestomer Insurance Company. For decades, the Ron Prestomer Insurance Agency has been your trusted neighbor right on Indianapolis Boulevard serving all your insurance needs. Their wide range of insurance products and services including home, auto, business, life insurance, and more has helped over a 1,000 individuals and businesses throughout Chicagoland and the Midwest. Call Ron Ronnie today at 844-219-844-0103. They're here to protect what matters to you most. Tortillas Nuevo Leon. Tortillas Nuevo Leon set the gold standard in Mexican cuisine across the Midwest. <coughs> Look for our iconic red and white label at your local grocery store. Indulge in the finest Mexican products crafted with local expertise and savor the taste of authenticity. Discover the flavors of Tortillas Nuevo Leon today. Tortillas Nuevo Leon, hechas con amor, para ti y tu familia de todo corazón. Tortillas Nuevo Leon, hechas con amor, para ti y tu familia de todo corazón. All right, thank you to all our sponsors, and welcome back to Power in Indiana Lake County Studios, sponsored by IBW Nick and Nika. And we are really honored to have a uh, author, attorney, and a really interesting uh, storyteller, uh, McCracken Poston Jr., with us. Uh, McCracken, how are you? Good morning. Welcome to Lockpod. Good morning from Northwest Georgia. There you go. You even sound like you're from Northwest Georgia, which I like. Now, wait. Let me. And I want to introduce you. Phil Talon's here. John Cantrell, who is also a criminal defense attorney, and oh, John, yeah, so we I wanted John in here so that you I'm an attorney too, but I don't get to court like John does uh, every day. So you guys are going to have a lot to talk about, especially about murder trials. And um, and Jill's here behind the microphone. I'm not a criminal lawyer. Hi, <laughs> <I>, Jill. <laughs> uh, let me ask you, McCracken, real quick, just so we can get kind of the lay of the land in Northwest Georgia. Is this um, Marjorie Taylor Green territory? Actually, it is. Yes. <laughs> and, and the that book awesome. begins. Uh, the book begins actually in my uh, very humiliating uh, loss in for a race for the U.S. Congress for that area, and uh, I was the first Democrat to lose since the Civil War, I think. Whoa! When, that, what year was that? 1996, and it was the uh, my my opponent had gotten elected as a Democrat and then switched parties. And I was his first challenger yeah. Uh, yeah. after that. Well, I can tell you uh, our, um, what we call our locomotive of the podcast, Mayor, Mayor Tom McDermott, uh, this podcast 
actually was born out of his congressional loss. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, you guys have that, and well, you guys that have, have that. Best thing in that ever happened to me, and I and I will say this to John. I don't know how many years he's been practicing, but uh, you know we all experience these stories. We all ex- anybody in criminal law experiences these stories, and and I really encourage all of my colleagues to please write those stories down. Um, and I was fortunate to have kept, I, I kept the story has long legs. It has been being told over and over again in different formats, forensic files, American justice, NPR, snap judgment, people magazine, the Washington post. And all of these stories have been just told and retold of the same case over the years. But the difference is three years ago, at the uh, request of a juror from the case, I had uh, Alvin Ridley, my client, uh, tested, and he's very much on the autistic spectrum. And that was what finally, in my head, allowed me to write the book. Well, I, I appreciate it, and I want to just introduce the book real quick before I turn it over to John for some hard-hitting questions here. But this book, Zenith Man, from what I could tell, it just hit the bookshelves on the 20th of February, so we're really honored to get you here right after its debut, and now you're going to be able to add Lockpot to that list along with People Magazine of where we were able to tell Zenith Man's story. <laughs> maybe maybe it'll make that to the list. Top. <laughs> maybe, maybe, but not. Maybe, but maybe not. I'm honored. I'm honored well, to be here. Well, thank you. Thanks for coming on, John. The reason uh, why this this story is so fantastic and so interesting is because it's so bizarre. Like you'd think that this is the uh, the story of a movie. You have a guy whose wife passes away and nobody in the town knew that he had a wife or she still lived in the house and they just assumed that she was kidnapped and living in a cell in the basement and um Mr. It's a, Post and saved his saved his life. Yeah, I mean and that's what you guys do. I mean when there's justice to be had, I think that's one thing. You know, there's a lot of cases where you end up pleading them pleading them out, you know, pleading them out to gu- you know that he's guilty or whatever, or she's guilty. In this case, and, and I'm sure, John, like you, you experience, there's cases where you know that the state has it wrong and you got to do everything you can to make sure that justice is served. So, McCracken, if you could give us a little bit of just lay of the land up there where this happened so we understand where Ringgold, Georgia is and what exactly, uh, you know, Mr., I guess, the Zenith man was facing. Well, Alvin Ridley was a, a Zenith dealer and television repairman, and he was incredible at it. Uh, in the days of picture tubes. I think a lot that happened to him uh, could be directly attributed to the onset of solid state circuitry. About that time, uh, as he says it, people just buy TVs and throw them away. There's no real way for your local uh, classic picture tube TV repairman to repair them. And so that began to happen to him, but a series of other ills including uh, some litigation. He was very litigious. So basically he, he uh, riled pretty much every local official in town. How big and, is this county? Uh, the county is just under uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee. And how big is it? How many? Uh, there's about 60 plus thousand in the county. Uh, in the town, there's always hovered between three and 5,000 over this period of time. So most everybody knows everybody. Because just so you give you a little perspective, we're in a county of about 400-some thousand up here in a corner of northwest Indiana near Chicago. Excellent. And yeah, so we just want, I just want to make sure everybody understands that, that Mr. Ridley's town was only about three to 5,000 people, and I'm sure given his eccentricity, people knew him. He knew him, and he didn't help himself by some of that eccentricity. He would post, he shuttered the business uh, in 1984. He blamed it on uh, this kind of Rube Goldberg causal connection between a minor car accident that his father had in the company truck and his father's death with pancreatic cancer two years later. But in Alvin's mind, all the local officials uh, kind of worried him to death. And so, you know, he 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 was very litigious. It all got dismissed. There was a counterclaim which resulted in the seizure of a 1977 Chevy van that was the absolute apex of his conspiracy theories. The van was returned in three weeks because they didn't properly do it. 
They never sought to get it again. He refuses to accept it. The van is returning to the earth in place where they returned it. John, when you have, would you, do you have clients where you have, you know, let's just say like obvious, maybe mental health or just um, illnesses that you have to deal with? Half. Half, half your clients, you yes. think? Yeah, I mean, in, 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 what kind of challenge this is that? Well, you have to f kind of pull out the layers. You're trying to see documents or diagnoses. A lot of times, you know, people don't have diagnoses. They come from just really poor backgrounds. They don't have good medical care or good mental health treatment. It's, you know, it's not like the parents identified some issues. It's all socioeconomic uh, issues. People, you know, and then they just start doing drugs at a young age to try to self-medicate and self-regulate. So a lot of times you have untreated humans who get arrested at 23 with a terrible addiction, and you got to figure out what to do with them. I, I really want to ask McCracken, at what point when um, this guy got charged with killing his wife, did you begin, or like what made you start to think that he didn't do it? Well, first place, he and I began to meet at the same intersection of street and sidewalk every day, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday after his uh, wife's Saturday death. He was launching from the same phone stand that he called 911 from. And so I realized like day two, I think this guy is trying to meet me because uh, day three, I kind of hesitated a little bit and so did he. And then when I resumed walking, so did he. And so I knew him already. Uh, his, he went to school with my oldest sister, uh, but I was an infant when that was going on. Uh, he was my father's TV man. Uh, he re repaired our Zenith TV set when I was a kid. So we all saw his deterioration in terms of his business and his basic ability to get around and get along with people. But he was always considered eccentric. Now, interesting, uh, something that, that John said, I had Mr. Ridley evaluated by the state psychologist, but this was 1997 when Virginia died, 1998 when I, the, the main part of me representing him and early 1999 trial the autism spectrum had just been developed as mm. a theory and really all they were talking about was it in children and they was they were all talking about what to blame for it in fact we've had autism around since the, the, the whole age of man and some of our greatest contributors to our culture and to science have been autism uh, patients uh, and people with uh, Asperger's. Well, yeah. Alvin was a brilliant TV repairman in that old technology. Nobody ever complained about his work. But that doesn't mean he couldn't be he couldn't be a murderer. And oh, so I'm, what I'm what I'm wondering is, OK, so it's 97. He gets he gets charged in 97. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, and is he in jail pending trial, or is he out on bond? No, it, it happened in a weird way. Uh, we have a thing that occasionally happens called a special presentment. So he was not even uh, in any type of custody for eight wow. months. Oh, that wouldn't happen up here, John. And, <laughs> and so uh, it was a slow burn of an investigation. Of course, he spoke any time any law enforcement person <laughs> wanted to talk with him. <laughs> He John left shaking him his in head. his house, and he wouldn't let me in. It took me over a year to get in his house, <laughs> and it took this accidental turkey plate that my parents told me to take him for Thanksgiving. That was the transactional moment that he accepted the plate, and he knew I'd been trying to get in the house for over a year, and he finally invited me in. And, and once inside, I found the evidence that really really helped him and that was his wife's loose leaf journal of 30 years wow, wow. And how, and how, how long had she not been seen by neighbors or anybody in the town 27 years and so Whoa. so can you imagine trying to say listen i didn't kill my wife she wasn't a prisoner in the basement she just hasn't come out of the house for in 27, 27 years. years imagine trying to explain that 
And McCracken was able to convince everyone that this is true through her journals. Um, and in, in her journals that she was writing, she had all these sweet, uh, sweet stories about her and her husband. We watched, this is what we watched for TV. This is what he made me for dinner. He took amazing care of her. I, f I feel it, it, the, uh, the story makes you really uh, feel real bad for this guy, for sure. Well, they, they were, um, they lived as poor people but they had food. She doc documented her daily things that they were going to eat for supper and they, they seemed to eat well, but she had severe epilepsy from childhood. And that was our theory from the get go when he said she had a spell and he called it epileptic is what the way he pronounced it. And so I began immediately to look for epilepsy deaths. The problem was we have good medication and these days and people can live long lives uh, just like I have type 1 diabetes and I use an insulin pump. So I'm, I can hopefully expect for a, a normal lifespan because of medication and so could she. But God told her in September of 1977, stop taking your medicine. I'm going to take care of you from now. I could understand that because with Virginia's history, she often had a reaction to the medication. And so she just was done with it. And beautifully, because Alvin is a pack rat, I could show empty medicine bottles until when Virginia wrote that. And then he had several months of full medicine bottles. So because he never threw anything away, I had a lot of evidence once I got inside that house. What, was he ever, was he, I don't want to give the book away because we want to make sure we pump your book up and you sell a bunch of these. Was he ever charged? Was there a trial? Absolutely. He was charged in late June of 1998, eight months after the trial by special presentment. So we didn't see the indictment coming. I had actually stopped meeting with him because I said, look, it seems like this thing's going to go away. looks like they, they figured it out. And next thing you know, I had bought a, a new Ford Explorer and it had those Firestone tires that the treads were separating, those Bridgestone yeah, Firestone remember those, prices. Sure. Had a blowout, was taking it to a tire place in Ringgold. And the guy was so excited as a, a wrecker was taking an old truck away. He said, Alvin Ridley was just arrested here for keeping his wife locked up all those years and murdering her. Whoa. And I looked at my new bride of just a few weeks and said, uh, I've got to go somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, you got, John, that happens as well, right? Where you've got clients that haven't been charged yet. Yeah. And all of a sudden the bomb drops. Sometimes it, it, it really takes years. Uh, I wanted to ask you like a couple questions and uh, like just parts of the trial. You don't care about talking about certain parts of the book, do you? Absolutely not. So. I'm trying to figure out from a criminal defense perspective how you ended up admitting Flo Joe's autopsy in your trial. Flor <laughs> Florence Griffith Joyner, <laughs> she was epileptic. She died of epilepsy. And so, like, I'm thinking in my head, well, how did McCracken get Flo Joe's autopsy admitted <laughs> into his trial? Like, it seems right? implausible, but it had has to have to deal with, like, cross-examining the pathologist and the medical examiner saying, oh, yeah, well, she didn't die from epilepsy. Look Flo at Flo Joe. Flo Joe's <laughs> doctor. She had probably, like, the world's greatest doctors. Like, um, uh, it's, I, I really want to hear this part of the story. All right, let's it's hear fascinating. it. This is good. Now, John, you, you put it in a nutshell better than I've been able to. We had the possibly the most famous athlete in the world at that time and the greatest athlete in the world at that time. And there were always the naysayers who wanted to dog her with the allegations of the doping and the things that made her, they thought, so great. So she got the best autopsy possibly <laughs> ever done for a suspicious death. And that autopsy uh, showed uh, petechial hemorrhaging around the eyes, the mouth, the armpits, all the soft tissue. The exact same that Virginia Ridley had. Wow. Perhaps the least known woman in the world. It was very tragic. And I just, I hated it because I, I was a fan of Flojo. I tried to see her at the Atlanta Olympics, but she wasn't running. And I, I later learned that it was because of the seizure disorder.
that nobody else really knew about. But I saw her. I actually saw her from a distance at the Atlanta Games in 96. John. So so I was very intent on <laughs> on getting that in. But John raises a good point. How did you get that right. in? Yeah. Well, I sent it to the state, and I sent it to my epilepsy expert, uh, Braxton Bryant Wanamaker in Orangeburg, South Carolina. And I just kept pushing it and kept pushing it at trial. And finally... Um, the DA even brought it up, trying to draw a contrast with uh, his uh, pathologist. Well, once he opens the door, and yep. and, and uh, so it was, it was definitely relevant. And both experts on both sides uh, argued from it. Uh, the state's position was, well, the type of petechial hemorrhages uh, that couldn't have all come from a seizure. Well, there's Florence Griffith Joyner, who obviously. Uh, died from a seizure and she has the same markings well mccracken i want to you know we're uh john's got to get to court yep. I, I, we're gonna I, I, yeah, I, I do one more question I, I, all right I wanted, this is exciting because john usually is out of here at eight o'clock so this is this okay. is good so you, you did an amazing job on defending that guy you need everybody needs to read this book because his defense was just fascinating and just even the story generally is fascinating but you were able to save this man but i feel like you're the perfect guest for Lockpod because you've defended <laughs> some people in your career and these stories just ring to our audience he defended a guy listen to the story this is so lake county northwest indiana oh, he boy. defended a guy who changed his middle name from anthony to low tax <laughs> so sounds like somebody that would be on the ballot yeah, up here yeah so so he changed it because he was running for tax collector and he changed his middle name to low tax and then during the election low tax gets charged with killing his incumbent <laughs> opponent <laughs> And McCracken defended the guy. Wow! Now that's a book. So, so then well, there was then there. Yeah, you need to write. Can you write that book? Because well, I love I, that story. I suggested that he, you know, get rid of that ridiculous middle name Low Tax, <laughs> which did work in that area of Tennessee. <laughs> and so I thought, well, why don't you change it to Not Guilty? <laughs> <laughs> that's great, McCracken. I just want to thank you for coming on. Yeah, thank um, you. This this book, Zenith Man, is right hot off the presses as of February twentieth. Um, and McCracken Poston Jr. is the author. I'm sure you can get it on Amazon and at other great places online. So yeah, check out the, Zenith uh, Man. Uh, John has put the link in our uh, feed, and uh, we're good to go. People have already said they bought it. People have already said they bought it right up here in Northwest Indiana. So, yeah. McCracken, thank you so much for coming on. Thank You've been you. a great guest on LockPod. Thank you. This is a wonderful story and a cautionary tale. Uh, I think families with autistic uh, members will recognize it in my client years before I could recognize it. That's great. Well, good luck with the book. Thanks for coming on. Maybe we'll have you on again. Thanks, McCracken. Thank you. All right, have a great day. It, right. it sounds like a Netflix documentary. I agree. It's you know coming. what I mean? It's, it's coming. Because there's can... the makings of it. There's very interesting stuff in that case. Next time, McCracken will be like, you know, I'm a little too big for you now. Oh, yeah. No I more, can't no come more on Lockpod. Lock Pod. Not once he's on Netflix. It's over. We're going to do some ads and come back with our favorite person that is the locomotive refers to, used to be a doctor, Dr. <laughs> Dr. Michael Foride will be right back after this break. Good morning. MCR Partners, are you seeking expertise in economic development, finance, and planning? Look no further than MCR Partners, your go-to professionals for comprehensive solutions. Their dedicated team is ready to assess your opportunities and ensure the successful completion of your projects. Discover the difference MCR Partners can make in navigating the intricacies of economic development. Stay informed and connected by visiting our website at mcrpartnersllc.com. For personalized assistance, reach out to Matt Reardon at 219-741-9511. Byway Brewing, a family-friendly microbrewery, welcomes you to their spacious taproom and outdoor patio. Enjoy award-winning craft beer, a chef-driven menu, and craft draft cocktails. Their unique brewing equipment and production facility provide a perfect backdrop for private events, whether it's a bridal shower, reunion, or corporate party. With their new food truck, they can cater to your corporate and private events off-site. Customer service is our top priority at Byway Brewing. Just off 8094 at the Kennedy Avenue South exit, discover more at bywaybrewing.beer. Ku Klaus Law. Are you currently navigating complex legal challenges, unsure of where to turn for guidance? Your search ends here with Ku Klaus Law, your trusted partner for legal solutions in Indiana and Illinois. Whether you're seeking expert representation for real estate transactions, need assistance in forming your business, or have experienced a personal injury at work or in a car crash, Ku Klaus Law 
is here for you. No matter the nature of your legal issue, their team is ready to help. Call them today at 219-671-6347 to schedule your free consultation. Hablamos Espanol. Rogers Roofing. When you demand nothing but the best for your home and family, trust the industry leader, (laughs) Rogers Roofing. For over 54 years, they've been transforming homes in Northwest Indiana and Chicago land. Their commitment to quality shines through the roofing, siding, gutters, windows, all backed by the most comprehensive warranties in the business. Visit their website, rogersroofing.com, or call 219-933-9145 to schedule your free consultation. That's rogersroofing.com. 219-933-9145. 219-933-9145. At Rogers Roofing, we expect, not, expect nothing less than excellence every single time. Well, that thank you. Good. That was very good. So good to hear your voice coming from the Power in Indiana <clears throat> Lake County Studios. Thank I you. love it here. It's a beautiful spot. Welcome back. Thank you. We it's haven't nice. seen you in way too long. Well, I'm sorry about that. I feel pretty good now that I'm coming out. Oh, you've come out officially. Wow. Uh, come l- oh, yeah. now, go no, ahead, I've please. Out, I've been in public. Phil? It's a, Breaking yeah. news. <laughs> yeah, no. Doctor Foride is coming out. I've just missed a bunch, you know, and so yeah. I'm just coming out of my shell a little bit. <laughs> doctor Mike, formerly Doctor Michael Foride, is coming out <laughs> on Lockpot. <laughs> We're proud of you. I'm excited. I'm, we always knew much. it. Thank right? you very much. His style is just too yeah. too good. Well, you know, we um, when you were in Dubai, we were trying to get you on uh, via Skype, which would have been awesome because your Vietnam. Your Hanoi I saw uh, visit I was, was or maybe you're in sight. It, it was so good. Yeah, thank you. It was uh, my ear. I, I wish I had known how to. I couldn't figure out how to not lose you guys. It and, was only going to be going. upped by your visit from Dubai. Oh, that was terrible. And I got myself better uh, earbuds since then, and all yes. kinds. Of so things. you'd have been all set. I would have been all set. Tell I would have, been, a, we've I would got have a, been happy to show you. We've got a photo of you from Dubai. D- this uh, is this is Dallas. Well, was, we're gonna we're gonna right, get Dubai on, up man. first. Hold on, I I, I messed John up. All right, here we Dubai. go. Now the the heading of this, by the way, it's a very cool picture. Thank you. The My pants look great. My nose was in heaven. Yes. You you penned that. Yes, I did. Tell us about this. <laughs> that photo. was just the the walking past this guy, this guy's joint. They just the describe the pure it. Pure inhalation of the fragrances that you probably know, but not into the to it, the power, the instant. Here's what it looks like, and he'll put it in your schnoz, and you go, whoa, you get blown away. But a fr- the friend who took the shot said, don't taste anything, don't drink anything. <laughs> he goes, these Just are smell. fully exposed all day, and people touch them with their hands, and their hands aren't clean. And, and you know, So he said, don't eat it. But I did. I took a whiff of a lot of this stuff, and a lot of it's really beautiful, man. It look, what a great picture. It's, the colors the are amazing. The colors and are there's unbelievable. A, there's chunks. Of, there's that blue is indigo. You see that blue that's there? Oh, yeah. That's there. indigo. Those wow. are just chunks of indigo. Oh. They're beautiful. Take it home. Tie-dye shirt. Cap. The color of the king. <laughs> Should have yeah. done that. Don't it's, put that in your luggage. Though. It was great. And some of the stuff instantly opened my sinuses, instantly turned on, turned on some desire to eat. And I should oh. have brought bags of the stuff home. They have teas. They had stuff for erectile dysfunction, John. They had everything. <laughs> <laughs> when Wait, he said... When you, John Vesmer or John is, Cantrell? <laughs> no, please. Is that please. the sickness you have? John's gone. I don't know. That's what he's coming out with today. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What's that? Erectile dysfunction. No, I do not, not struggle with that, that today. for the record. Yeah. <laughs> John Fez just wanted to Breaking make sure. news. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a great photo. But that was, that was Dubai. And Dubai was, <laughs> that's you, Phil. <laughs> that was shiny and beautiful and everything. How and long were you there? I was there for just under a week. Give us like a little fact about Dubai that many of us may not know about. It's a mirage. Really? Yeah. That's the go- that's the takeaway. It's a mirage. It's shiny and beautiful, but it's imagine that all the structures you see that are just absolutely each and every one with this architectural individuality, beautiful. Vegas times five. You know, it's just like the area, the the one where the, the Burj Khalifa. It's all owned by the same real estate company. But you look at some of these structures at night, and there's very few lights on them in them. I mean, the occupancy of some oh, of these buildings make them look like giant billboards for people just to say, wow. But no one's there. Wow. In your, so, so you're, interesting. You're a world traveler. Yeah. So where does this rank I- as far as your trips around the world? Like, where would you put Dubai? Is it in the top 10 of your favorite places? Or wh- what are we talking? If I, didn't have to, if I didn't have to go back and do a medical show there, there's probably no reason for me to see it. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. You've done, done it. For. And Dubai is in OAE or... or it's UAE. 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 United and, and Arab Emirates. Look shiny, UAE. beautiful. You don't see any UAE food. You see food from all over the place. Wow. You see So no Yemeni like local identity. There, it was a port 
community. And so we went and we had dinners in the old part of Dubai where you have clothes hanging from uh, from balconies and you got 14 people occupying the same room at a dollar an hour wages. You saw that kind of thing when you go, get outside of the shiny, you don't hear about that. the shiny shine. I mean, there's people that have to service that shine. Yeah. And that shine is without a doubt gorgeous and beautiful. And you see all these abandoned vehicles they always talk about and everybody's got a Bugatti or, or <laughs> whatever it is. Well, there are people that will never have Bugattis. Yeah. Yep, and they're all Well, welcome there. back. I'm Thank glad you made so it. Much. Now, this other photo that you've posted recently, I know that you are big on decompression. Yes. And that's one of your one of your passions yes, from a, as from it a is. medical perspective. Yes. Tell us about this picture. I was uh, you know, in my career, I've I've been fortunate to have the opportunity to meet, to meet a lot of Mavericks. This is Dr. William Martin with me. He's 81 years of age on this photo. And Dr. William Martin and his and his partner Gustavo Ramos did a study in the early 90s <clears throat> based on the effects of a machine called the VAX-D or vertebral axial decompression. And that vertebral That's axial helpful. just means I'm going to pull your body in one lo- in the length in its length just the axis of its length and by opening the body by pulling it in a controlled fashion it demonstrated because these guys inserted William Martin right there inserted reverse vacuum gauges as provided by Hewlett Packard into a, a live human being right into their discs and he then turned on the the vax d machine which was the early machine that i used while i was still in practice and william martin here proved that with the right which is with the, the right situation where you just let somebody lay there and you just pull them open from both ends they achieved <laughs> They and put vacuum that. tubes in them. There's isn't, the, there, isn't there a movie episode called title. Like Caterpillar or something about that? <laughs> well, there's one. Episode there was one title, John. <laughs> the but conditions are perfect. You just pull someone from open ends. from both ends. <laughs> open, yeah, that's it. You don't want that show, John. Stay up ready. <laughs> but the, uh, and he's not feeling good. But they, they demonstrated a, a, a negative 200 pounds of mercury pressure where discs were drawn back to their previous state of existence. Unbelievable. Yeah, it's like you, if, the, if you land on your dupa, you land on your bottom, them and you squish that little soft scallop you got would imagine that unsquishing it would do you some good okay so he almost 30 years ago he proved it and his article was published in the journal of neurosurgery and you know it's crazy because that's 30 years ago here i've been using devices for two decades locally you think there's a hospital system in the whole freaking city of chicago that uses these damn machines how many zero wow wow Zero. So you're a firm believer in this, Michael. Well, well, Even though regular, I don't want to say regular, medicine at hospitals and clinics, you can't find this. Can't find it. I'll give you the extreme example just happened this week. Uh, the cat I travel with, Salim Musalam, who owns the company, um, donated a machine. He's Palestinian. He donated a machine to Jordan, the, and he gave it to the University of Jordan Hospital. The orthopedic spinal surgeons said this week, if that machine does not leave, we are leaving. What? Wow. So what does that tell you it's about? taking away their work. Takes away their work. It's a dollar and cents thing. The, wow. Johns Hopkins is on board. Salim, they are. Oh, Joe, uh, Salim, is, uh, Salim is an alum of Johns Hopkins. He's currently finishing his, his uh, Master's of Medical Engineering. And Johns Hopkins people are on board. I sit next to a Johns Hopkins professor on the advisory board. Next to me, Mayo Clinic, uh, head of neurosurgery from Mayo Clinic, just just asked if he could be on the medical advisory board. I'm sitting at that table, and I can't believe the fact that these guys, Mayo's on board, Georgetown, Stanford, so Michael, the University what's the, of South Florida. What's the plan moving forward then? Like, what is your, I mean, are you going to be involved in this? What's your plan? I just, I teach. Yeah. I teach. I, I promote it. I do. You see it as becoming more mainstream. Oh, it's it. it there's it's can't not be. It's only has a ninety two plus percent success rate. Despite, only, <laughs> only. <laughs> what surgeon is going to give you that kind of percentage guarantee? Ninety two percent. You get a lot of papers is, to sign when you have surgery, right, Phil? About right. like how you are not going to make it, Absolutely. right? Or what what you can anticipate is a negative result of me cutting into you, even you know the. In, infection, scarring. So, Maybe I didn't hit the right area. But this thing opens up everything, and it works on the neck and works on the back. 92% of the time John? solves the problem. I was going to say, this is what Forite's been up to. Let me show you a picture of what Phil's been up to. Oh, oh gosh. Creamy chicken cock? 
Excuse me. There's the there's <laughs> the, title. the title. Oh boy. <clears throat> Let's. <laughs> oh jeez. Look at this photo, Michael. Uh, what do you got there? Chicken cock. It looks like. <laughs> yeah. Phil, you want to explain that? It's got a 92.7 percent proof. Proof <laughs> that it works. I'm telling you. So you versus me. We'll try yours. I'll you want to you describe this, Phil? Um, we were uh, partic- We were at a bar last night or a restaurant. That it's, sounds better, right? And uh, it actually, was a bar though. <laughs> we saw this bottle up there, and I've seen a lot of bottles. I mean, we've all yeah. seen a lot of different bottles of stuff. I've never seen one called chicken cock before. So I wanted to see what it was. And uh, it turns out it's a Kentucky straight uh, rye whiskey. I will say it this. Wasn't the Phil, shape did, of the bottle? Phil mm-hmm. didn't drink it. No. He was having a pineapple vodka instead. You know what? <laughs> the pineapple vodka tastes a lot better than that. Chicken I'll, cock? I'll put money Does on Does pineapple it. vodka taste better than chicken cock? I'm going to say yes. <laughs> and, it, and I didn't even try that. Is it like tequila? Like so is there an actual oh, no. chicken cock in it? No, like no. The, like this a worm? Is, no. Right, right, right. Yeah, they have that. Uh-huh. Could you imagine? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I didn't ask. Phil, we didn't ask if anything was in we it. We did not. <laughs> they have Cobra tonics in, in Vietnam, too. They, you see is this, that? that? The new, Cobra uh, all spun up in there. Whoa. Is this that new Italian place? Yeah. It is, yeah. This oh, is, well, is it? it's the old true. Pl- it's old true Barbecue, mm-hmm. uh, another former sponsor, and uh, Fiori is on the other side. And it was, We didn't eat. It we, was just, your, we just had a drink. It was your pre-show location yeah. for a long oh, time, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. you and I went back there for... Uh, Check Nostalgia. it out, old time steak. Yeah. yeah, it was it was good. It was it was nice, good atmosphere. You're right here in Munster, so it was it was a good deal. So, um, all right, we're going to change topics because this came up, and actually, uh, Javez was the one who got me the first video, and then I kind of kept going with it. Mm-hmm. And uh, many of you probably heard that Tucker Carlson on his new network, which is called the Tucker Carlson Network, go figure, mm-hmm. um, decided he was going to go to Russia and interview Val- Vladimir Putin, and kind of just show how great Russia is. Uh, as compared to America. It was a long interview, and uh, we're going to go over a couple of very interesting uh, clips of it, and also I've got some great um, commentary by Jonathan John Stewart, who I'm a big fan of in The Daily Show. So really interesting. I thought this was... Actually, John sent me this clip, and we both laughed about this. So here is Tucker Carlson uh, discovering for himself something that we think probably most of us have experienced. <laughs> All right. Here we go. So I guess you put in 10 rubles here and you get it back when you put the cart back. So it's free, but there's an incentive to return it and not just bring it to your homeless encampment. All right. Okay. So anybody want anybody ever been to Aldi's? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, right. What? And I, I mean, think it's less about out. taking it to a homeless encampment and more about not leaving it in the parking lot. Right. Of course, Just, right. I but he had to, he question. had to get that in though, didn't he? Yeah, he had to yeah. he had to run along those lines. He's experienced that. So you know, I doubt he has. <laughs> all these got the the carts with the the quarters, right? Yeah. yeah. Has anyone tried to take a cart out because they have those signs that say the carts lock up like once you make it past the parking lot? I've never tested it. Uh, that ha- yes, that happened to me happen? in Tampa at a Target. You tried to steal yeah. a cart? No, no, no. <laughs> no. You went to a homeless away. encampment? I was trying to give it to the homeless guy next to me. No, I was actually leaving the Target, and I was like, why? Because we were going to the car, and the, I, I actually had pulled up the car instead of parking in the parking garage, and Ethan was pushing the cart out, and I was like, come on, let's go. Load it up. Dad, I can't, I can't, I can't move it anymore. <laughs> it and stopped. Like, it locked the wheels up. Wow. It's crazy. Really? That was the, the, the only time I'd seen it. Ikea carts, those ones that are sort of triangulated, and they're, those are great. Those yes. are crazy. And there's no lock. So Tucker decided that he um, wanted to kind of continue on this little journey through uh, Russia, and he showed, like, some really fancy subways saying, like, no subway in America is this clean. He, no uh, bums. We've got some, right, no bums. But here is, uh, here, here's another clip of um, uh, him uh, this is The Daily Show and John Stewart kind of describing uh, what's going on here. This is really interesting. So this is the uh, two minute, 50 second mark. Yeah, this is when John Stewart kind of talks about the interview in general. And yep. then we're going to go back to the grocery store. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Professor, tell me, what is step one in delivering world class fealty to power? Here's why we're doing it. First, because it's our job. We're in journalism. Lie about what your job is. <laughs> We're in journalism. Our duty is to inform people. Lie about what your duty <laughs> is. Americans have a right to know all they can about a war they're implicated in. Freedom of speech is our birthright. We were born with the right to say what we believe. 
Oh, shit. <laughs> Kudos, Sensei. That was deep. I have much to learn. Disguise your deception and capitulation to power as noble and moral <laughs> and based in freedom. Yeah. All right, yeah, so that, that, that's pretty good, right? Yeah. And it's it just this whole interview to me, really. I I just am thinking to myself, and Tom said this on the show so many times. You know, I served. In, he says I served in the Russian Navy. Or, I'm sorry, I served in the Navy, and Russia was our enemy. Right. I we went. I mean, I know Russia's our enemy. Yet we have people in America that are trying to cozy up to Vladimir Putin. Michael, you've been to Poland. You've yes. been on the front lines, and you've seen. Well, I'm sorry, I guess the, back, the rear flank, the back lines of, of what's going on over there. I mean, is there any question in your mind that Vladimir Putin is responsible for the war in Ukraine? There's no doubt about yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, he's just grabbing. Yeah. Look what he did in Navalny now. Well, and then we're going to get to that. So I want to Yeah, do, but this guy kisses his dupa. Well, that's what I mean. It's, it's, it's unbelievable it's as an American, thing. he's going over there to try to say, look how great Russia is. Look how great it is. Look how clean it is. Look at these grocery stores. And here he is once again in the grocery store. John, if you could play that. Putin There's, laughed at him. I know. We're going to get to that. The, I can't uh, wait. Grocery cart escalator. This is designed, I'm figuring this out now, where the wheels don't move. They lock on the grocery cart escalator. Look, Ma, no hands. Menard says. I mean, isn't that, isn't that just bizarre? Oh, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then here he is at the checkout. And John and I talked about this um, before we, before we uh, got on the show about how bizarre this whole um, uh, kind of like analogy he makes to American grocery stores is. So here's Tucker again. This for the bread. Oh, no, I'm There's sorry. This is I bread. I pretty well. Look at that. It's fresh, too. Look at that. Oh, come on. It's weird, isn't it? How bizarre is that? Like, like you should find fresh bread here. Like, what is he talking about? I had no clue, John. I didn't even know Russia was known for its bread. <laughs> exactly. He's sniffing the plastic, man. He's, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> He's a petrochemical It's so huffer. bizarre. John, didn't you find this to be weird? Super bizarre. And this is coming from a guy, by the way, who... You have his shirt. I don't have his shirt, but I, I was... I played the Putin interview right when it launched. I, wanna, I was curious. I yeah. wanted to hear what it was about. And I left thinking this was, number one, a lame interview. Two freaking hours. Half an hour of it was like Putin talking about history in the 1300s and why he's rightfully, you know, to take Ukraine, <laughs> land, blah, blah, blah. It was just lame. And yeah. then Tucker starts releasing what to me is essentially like some propaganda for Russia. Agree, agree like, John. It is just bizarre, truly bizarre. So and so here he is at the checkout line saying how amazing uh, Russian prices are. And then uh, we're gonna. <laughs> and this is this is another weird one. So John, you know, you got that. One. We didn't pay any attention to costs as we were just putting in the cart what we would actually eat over a week, and we all came in around four hundred bucks, about four hundred bucks. Um, it was $104 US here. And coming to a Russian grocery store, the heart of evil, and seeing what things cost and how people live, it will radicalize you against our leaders. That's how I feel anyway, radicalized. Think about that. Think wow. about what he just said. It'll get you upset. Ooh, That must Gosh. be good, bro. I mean, that is like, I don't, I don't want to use too big of a word, but it's like almost treasonous. I, it, it's like, come on. Let me play that again. Like, yeah, like let's folks, to... folks watching this, like right now, listen, watch the way he looks at the camera and says this. Like, it is so purposeful to his audience. It's really kind of scary, to be honest. And by this is coming from a guy who's, I'm a Tucker fan. Yeah. But listen we to this. all came in around 400 bucks, about 400 bucks. Um, it was $104 US here. And coming to. Right here. Russian grocery store, the heart of evil, and seeing what things cost and how people live, right here. it will radicalize you against our leaders. That's how I feel anyway, radicalized. Radicalize you against our leaders. January that is, 6th, that's, that's resounding. It's so bizarre. He was and, there. And he's just trying to, I, to me, he's trying to gin up just this, like, um, you know, to make Putin feel like, oh, look how great Putin is or look how nice he is or it's good over here in Russia it's not bad this is their average grocery store yeah and th but I think, doubt that I doubt it too but it, but this is the interesting part and I think John Stewart puts it he kind of encapsulates what I was thinking a lot better than I can say it and this is a really good kind um, oh, of summary let me of, get there real quick yeah I'm sorry John yep, yep here we yep. go but here's the reality you f 
f***ing know all this? Because you aren't as dumb as your face would have us believe. <laughs> Perhaps if your handlers had allowed, you would have seen there is a hidden fee to your cheap groceries and orderly streets. Ask Alexei Navalny or any of his supporters. In Vladimir Putin's Russia, political repression is everywhere. And hundreds have been arrested for daring to honor Navalny so publicly. Right. Because the difference between our urinal caked chaotic subways and your candelabra beautiful subways is the literal price of freedom. But yeah, wow. that's, and I think that's right. Yeah, I, I, let's talk about that. For yeah, because this is where yeah. I kind of split off. This is where I kind of get lost here. <laughs> yep. So what John Stewart is saying is because of freedom, we have to deal with the shit people are dealing with in subways in America. I think what he's saying I is, it. I think Explain what he's it. saying is, so the way I took it was our freedoms that we have over here in the U.S. Like, for example, in Russia, you're not about to fuck with the subway system. You're not going to put some graffiti up. You're not going to misstep anything. You're not going to do a thing that can get you in trouble because if you do, it's not going to be pretty. And I think that maybe that's you li- uh, if you live in fear and you live in that kind of repress repression type system. I mean, that's what people don't, you know, one of the things that got brought up that we didn't show was that, oh, it's a hundred bucks for groceries, but guess what? The average Russian makes 200 bucks a week. Right, right. And that was just a, 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 a whole cart of bread. You can't go out and bitch about <laughs> Joe, right. You can't go and bitch about Joe Biden, uh, you know, if he was the president of Russia because you'd get arrested. Okay, let's change the country then. Okay. Japan. Okay. Uh, I've never been there. It's on the top of my list. But from what Would I love understand, Great it's scheme. incredibly orderly. Also free, free yeah. country. Yeah. But their subways, there's not one person walking the wrong way. It's a very orderly country. Why can't we have better <laughs> things here? Like when, it, you know, specifically the subways is what John Stewart and Tucker were ca- talking about. We don't have to put up with this stuff here, but we are. Yeah, I mean, it's what, not the cost of freedom. Like that's where John Stewart lost me. Well, I, I don't think maybe. I think maybe the point was when he was making it about Navalny. Like the cost of a lot of this is that you know we. Ha- I, I hear what you're saying, John. And actually, he made fun of the New York subway earlier in oh, this, okay. but we did yeah. just about that. It hasn't been improved since 1904, and it it was made with urine cakes. That's why he <laughs> said that. But yeah, I mean, I hear you, right? Why don't we have a nicer subway in New York? I don't. Maybe because in Russia, you got to remember. The government decides what they're going to spend their money on, and nobody says anything, right? You don't have, like, this ability of back and forth and city council meetings and let's do this, let's do mm-hmm. that. I guess it's just prioritizing spending. I don't know. Yeah, but what he's putting up, uh, what he's making a point of is the price of freedom. I mean, that's what it really comes down to. He's using whatever. You could use Subway as an example or whatever, mm-hmm. but in Russia, you, ha- you don't have freedom. So it doesn't matter what, he's, what Tucker is saying is so great over there. <laughs> It doesn't matter in the long run if you don't start with freedom, mm-hmm. you got nothing. It, it, so I think that was nothing. His point. You can't raise your hand and complain about a thing. Zero. You got nothing. Yeah, they were whacking people waiting for Navalny. When he, oh, even yeah. when he re arrived in the country, they were just clobbering them. Scary. Did you guys watch yeah. the interview, the Putin Tucker interview? Um, I only watched clips. I did Same. not sit and watch Same. two hours, John. Dude, I heard he didn't softball. have to. I heard that uh, Tucker didn't have to wipe his face at the end because. <laughs> Putin was unsatisfied. So do you, so John, do you have, that's interesting because here is Putin in Russian uh, talking to a a British um, uh, reporter and I guess we'll translate what he says, but here it's just a clip. It wasn't a hard line. He says that Carlson's dangerous. (laughs) It says, oh my God, he did just say that. He said, Carlson is a dangerous person. And then why? And he says, he says, because I thought he would have um, asked really tough questions, but he didn't. He <laughs> was not hard line, okay? He was prepared for it. I wanted to answer him. Give me a chance to respond. Придало бы определенную специфику всей нашей беседе, но он избрал другую тактику. Откровенно говоря, he chose a different tactic. от этого интервью не получил. I didn't get complete pleasure from this interview. <laughs> yeah, Tucker. <laughs> so, I mean, it's crazy, right? I mean, I, he basically rips Tucker for not asking tough questions. I actually can't think. I watched the whole two hours. I cannot think of one question that Tucker even asked him. 
Wow. That's how that's how wow. unforgettable it was. This guy flies over to Russia to interview Putin. Or forgettable. First in two <laughs> years. And the, it's just totally forgettable. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. Well, but okay, he's saying Putin's saying I wanted tougher questions, but then this is the same guy that murders people if you say the wrong thing. That's or right. That. I mean, or so, like <clears throat> Yeah, I, I I'm with you, Phil. I don't right? trust anything with I, him. I, I wouldn't you know. Yeah, all of a sudden he asked a tough question. Uh Tucker, we're gonna yeah. Keep you here for a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I'd be over there saying, "So, what's your favorite TV yeah. show, Putin?" Because I think you would say some good thoughts for the rest of us to pick up on. Um, you know, one of the stories we've been pushing over the last several weeks, and as as mayor's loving this story, by the way. Just I think being a, a mayor, he understands kind of you know what your job is and what you're supposed to do for your constituents. Uh, and Tiffany Henyard, the Mayor of Dalton mm-hmm. is a little challenged in that regard, I think. Uh, and recently, or I shouldn't even say recently, she um, uh, decided to have a council meeting that um, <laughs> I don't even know how to describe it's, this. It's job. hard, right? By the way, it's we hard. have something huge coming up with. Yeah, with this. Steve, our. Uh, we're te- we're, can our we tease yeah, this I think a little we bit? should tease it a little bit. Mm. Steve, our business manager, has been in contact with some. Very, uh, some former officials of Dalton, and we're hoping to have them on soon. Like so, exclusive. Very exclusive. If they don't sit down with someone else first, this will be exclusive. It's going to yeah. be big, so be awesome. stay tuned for that. Yeah. Um, but uh, Tiffany Henyard decided to um, come into the, the, the city council meeting um, dressed as the character Nino Brown, the drug kingpin from the movie New Jack City. I mean, that, does that sound like something Tom? Sounds normal to Tom me. Tom does that. Once, what is, oh, for sure. Every, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she arrived wearing black leather and carrying a stuffed toy dog. Uh, Henyard then directed her DJ to play a snippet of the song, Stop. Bitch Better said, Have My Money. Wait, you said DJ? <laughs> yes. She brought a DJ. Bitch Better Have My Money that's by Rihanna. Great, that's a great song. Though. Um, Pay me what you owe me. Don't act like you forgot. So that was the line. And in the meeting, she was demanding the council provide tens of thousands of dollars for an ice skating rink. And she also shouted, every single resident, pay me what you owe me. (laughs) And as one of her political opponents started to speak, she directed her DJ to drown him out. (laughs) Talk about Putin. What's the the bet, Kevin, that Dalton is going to pay not only for the DJ, but for the clothes and stuff she bought for that episode? They're already $5 million in debt. Well, they're yeah. five, five million, million and yeah. ten thousand. Exactly. Here's a picture of her as Nino Brown. Uh, I'm sure John put that up. Oh my god, he I will. Don't, I did not. But is if, it in here? It, I think it's in the note. But that's okay. okay. Um, we're going to play this. This is actually from that meeting. Fox News. Is Fox the best 32. part at the beginning because this is. It's like it's like um, the first thirty-five seconds. Okay, cool. Here we go. This mayor really showed up to a board meeting like Nino Brown, demanding money from the citizens. Employees and equipment. Fox 32's Dane Placco investigates where all that money is going. Nobody knows something. Don't know nobody knows nothing. Tiffany Henyard certainly isn't shy about attracting attention. Here she is starting a Dalton Village board meeting dressed like the Wesley Snipes kid. Dude, unbelievable. So there she is. In New Jack City, later punctuating her political points with the help of her own DJ. Every single resident. <laughs> Pay me what you owe me. What? <laughs> what? Do that again, John. Yes. Do that again. That is great. Her own DJ. Every single resident. <laughs> Pay me what you owe me. Wow. It's not boring. <laughs> I can't We need a, Phil. Get busy. Yes. Oh, we I see where you're going with this. I thought we were, we were talking negatively about this, but what you're saying is, <laughs> in Hammond, we should start instituting this type of... Production. Yeah, DJ at Mayor's Night Out. Okay. Somebody gets up, criticizes the mayor. We just start (laughs) flooding them with music. Can't hear them. Thank you. Everyone needs a walkout song, too, (laughs) on the council. I love that. That is great. A little walkout song. Yeah, mic drop, mic. Unbelievable. All right, who who would Mayor Tom dress dress up as though? Who would we have him? Oh, you know what I mean. Like who would? Well, what's the what's the arguing? He's trapped. He does do super mayor. Mm -hmm. He does a leprechaun thing for. um, Yes. Yeah, for the St. Patrick's Day? Yeah, St. Patty's Day. Okay. I think Tom's doing just fine with all this. I'm with you. I think think he could wear anything. Suit and tie. Tom could put anything in. You know what? We're missing an opportunity here. (laughs) You know what? Chief of Staff's recommendation, we need costumes and a DJ mayor. More of this in in Hammond City Hall. One more time, John. (laughs) Can we just do one more time of this? (laughs) Absolutely. (laughs) Can we make it the name of the episode, Pay Me What You Owe Me? (laughs) Yes. Good one. I like it. 
couple points with the help of her own DJ. Every single resident. <laughs> Pay me what you owe me. That's the mayor. <laughs> She's telling the residents. <laughs> pay, I mean, how Dude. does she get any percentage of vote for the next election? Oh, man. She's got to be it. I cannot wait for our exclusive. She's, She's kind of right? incredible. This sounds like a case yeah, for McCracken. Like McCracken <laughs> yeah, yeah McCracken Poston <laughs> Jr. Well, is on the case. And the you DJ boss. the DJ will vote for her because he just made like 10 grand. For just showing up by for bringing her. equipment to the. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I wonder so if she had the stuff. rights to use Rihanna's song. That's another. Well, good question. Yeah. Um, well, listen, I want to thank um, Michael for you coming, Dr. Foright, for coming on. I could talk longer. I know you could. Yeah, you could. Yeah. Yeah. You need your own podcast. You're always, no, you're always I'm gonna welcome. Come, I'm going to come over. This is beautiful here. Jill, like thank it. you for the Jill, thank you. million dollar bars. Oh. John, thank you for getting for John, thank you for getting thank you for just waking up this morning, really. Yeah, I want to get out of here, so let's wrap it up. All right. Yeah. If if we're not back on Tuesday, it's because we're all sick. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. If it'll be just it'll be just Tom sitting at a desk. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. By himself. Yeah. Figure pitting the buttons. Everybody have a great weekend. Uh the locomotive will be back on Tuesday. We've got more to talk about. Thanks for coming to uh, and it's listening nice to see you and guys. viewing the Midwest's most dangerous podcast, Lockpod. Coming right here from Nika IBW, Power in Indiana, Lake County Studios. Dr. Thank Foray, you. Thank you so much. We are out, Lockpod. Yeah. Bye. Points with the help of her own DJ. <laughs> Every single resident. Pay me what you owe me.